Today, I'm going to answer a question by a viewer who goes by the name of No Name. And his question pertains to the video titled, What is Ground?, which I have linked up here and down in the description. And the question is, how can current flow in the circuit at 6 minutes and 3 seconds? Where is the loop? I've gone down a rabbit hole and apparently currents only flow in loops. Okay, let's take a look at what he's talking about. The circuit in question, I show some batteries. So let's draw some batteries here. To create a stack of voltages that we can examine how the voltages look to a meter when we look under certain ways. And I put a resistor here to demonstrate what can happen with a ground loop, what a ground loop actually is. And so let's say uh, these reach 5 volts. Make this a 1 ohm resistor. And to measure this properly, I need to have my black lead of my voltmeter right there. But what I'm demonstrating here is that something has gone wrong with the circuit, and I have an ohm of resistance between where I think the ground is, where the ground should be, and the actual ground point, which should be right at, well, in this case, uh, in the middle of the battery stack. I can actually have the ground anywhere, but it's often appropriate to have a ground in the middle of the voltages when we have a, a choice such as this. So remember that zero volts is wherever you put the black lead of the voltmeter and the definition of ground is a point that is at zero volts. In other words, that's where you put the black lead of your voltmeter. This is where you measure all your voltages compared to and that ground must be able to source or sink whatever current is necessary without the voltage significantly changing. And so if I put my black lead here where I have a very low impedance between wherever I am and the batteries, I'm going to have that condition, okay? It's zero volts because that's where I put the black lead of the voltmeter. And because there's very little impedance in the batteries, I can take a lot of current out or push a lot of current in, and that voltage isn't going to change much. So that is a proper ground. I could have grounded anywhere that's appropriate for the circuit I'm designing, but in this case, this particular circuit is appropriate to have the ground in the middle of this stack of voltages. And just to make sure we understand here, what we have is a bunch of five volt batteries. So here's my lowest voltage, which I'll label as negative. My highest voltage I'll label as positive. What are these voltages? Well, uh, if I put the black lead of my voltmeter at my lowest possible voltage, which is often appropriate, we put it right there. What is that now? That is my zero volts. And so now this is the positive side, so my voltages are going higher and higher in this direction. So I'm going to go plus 5 volts there. I'll try that again, plus 5 volts here. This is going to be 5 volts yet higher, so that's going to be plus 10 volts. 5 volts higher, plus 15 volts. And finally up here I have plus 20 volts. So I have a 5 volt difference. It's like stacking buildings on top of each other. 5 stories, 5 stories, that makes 10 stories. And voltage works the same way. Voltage is a type of potential energy and altitude is a type of potential energy. So they work pretty much the same way. But in the particular circuit I have here, it's appropriate to measure my voltages from this point. So what do we get? Now I put my voltmeter here, or the black lead of my voltmeter here. And now that is my zero volts because my voltmeter, I have a black lead and a red lead. And the voltmeter tells me what? It tells me the voltage difference between the two leads. And if my higher voltage is at the red lead, I get a positive reading. If my higher voltage is at the black lead, I get a negative reading. So we usually measure our voltages. We put the black lead at the point we want to call zero volts. And then the red lead is going to give us voltages compared to that. I'm going to put my black lead there. Now my red lead is at the same voltage. What does the voltmeter tell me? It tells me the difference between the two voltages. What's the difference now? Zero volts. So that's what makes this zero volts. It's where I put the black lead. If I put the red lead there, red lead is at the same voltage as the black lead. Voltmeter tells me the difference. There is no difference. I get zero volts. So zero volts, now there's a five volt difference. This voltage is five volts higher than that voltage, so I read plus five. Five volts even higher, I read plus 10. Now I go down here, I'm five volts lower. 
So that's minus 5. Even 5 volts lower down here, it's minus 10 volts. So if I put my voltmeter here, instead of having 0, 5, 10, 15, and 20, I have 0 plus 5 plus 10 minus 5 minus 10. And that's what we have for the voltages there. And once again, my ground should be here, but there's a fault in my circuit. And the point in my circuit that should be connected to ground actually has one ohm between there and ground. Okay, so what that means is my ground should be here, so that's where the black lead of my voltmeter is. So what's the voltage here now? Well, by definition, zero volts is where I put the black lead. I put my red lead here. Red lead's telling me the difference between the two voltages. There is no difference. I see zero volts. And so there's my zero voltage, but I do not have a proper ground because if I have any current flowing through this resistor, let's say there's some current flowing this way and we're getting close to the question now. There's current flowing that way. Let's say there's one amp of current flowing that way. Well, if I have an amp of current flowing through this resistor, what's going to happen? Well, let's pull out here and just look at the resistor by itself. So here's where we get into our abstract thinking. I have out here a resistor all by itself. Now I know there's circuitry over here and I know there's circuitry over here and I know somewhere there's a power source powering that circuitry, but I'm not showing it because I only want to show what's going on right here. And let's say I know that there is one amp of current, conventional current flowing in that way through the resistor. What do I now know about this resistor? Not about anything else in the circuit. I know that there's a battery somewhere, so there's got to be, you know, positive to negative. That positive is somehow going through some circuitry and finally getting over to here. And somehow this goes back over to there. It's out there, but I'm ignoring it because it's just clutter. I want to get rid of it. I know it's out there. So, what do I know about this resistor? Let's make sure we know that that is one ohm. So we have a one ohm resistor. There's one amp of conventional current flowing this way. What do we know about that resistor? Well, one thing we know is that when conventional current enters a resistor, that the voltage backs up. It's like water going down a clogged drain. It's going to back up and give more and more pressure as it backs up more and more. So my current, my electricity is backing up over here and causing a rise in voltage or a more positive voltage. And then on the other side, I'm going to get a lower voltage. I've demonstrated this many times with a soda straw where I blow through the straw air goes freely, the pressure is pretty much the same anywhere in the straw, but when I pinch it down, I get a backup of pressure on this side and less pressure on that side. So whenever I have current flowing through a resistance, I'm going to get a higher pressure where the current goes in and a lower pressure where it goes out. And so that's exactly what I have here. So I know that my voltage is going to be higher here and lower there. I've labeled that as positive and negative. So I take my trusty voltmeter and I put my black lead at the lower voltage, my red lead at the higher voltage. When the red lead's at a higher voltage, I get a positive reading. Oh, look at that, positive. And then the voltmeter is going to tell me what the difference between the two voltages is. And what's that? Well, that's Ohm's law, of course. I have one amp flowing through one ohm. If you don't know your voltage, you multiply. So one times one gives us an answer of one volt. So I have a difference of one volt and I'm going to have the higher voltage on that side and the lower voltage on that side labeled positive and negative. So if I put the voltmeter like that, I'm going to read positive one volt. If I put it like that, of course, I'm going to read negative one volt. So I know that about this resistor, not knowing anything else about the circuit out there. So the question came up and here's where we are at six minutes and three seconds. I have my zero volts here. And the question from Mr. No Name was, where's the loop? I thought current could only flow in loops. And my answer was that if you're going to get into a technical or scientific field, now is the time to learn to think in the abstract. For example, take the following logic statement. X cannot exist without Y. X exists. Therefore, Y must exist. 
current cannot flow without a loop. We have current, therefore there must be a loop. So where's the loop? I'm simply not showing it. Of course, I have some circuitry going from here. Who knows what it all is? I'll just put a big question mark there. There's some circuitry coming back to here. And presumably I have the same thing over here, some unknown circuitry coming back to that point. And so all that is out there causing us to have current of one amp flowing through that resistor. And of course, what's this tell us now? I have conventional current flowing that way through that resistor. Voltage is going to back up on this side, so I'm going to have to have a higher voltage here than I have over here. So I have the black lead of my voltmeter here, and if I put my red lead there, I'm going to read zero volts. What am I going to read here? Well, the voltage has to be lower by how much? One ohm, one amp, it's going to be a volt lower. So when I put the red lead of my voltmeter at my ground, I read negative one volt. Okay, that can't work. And also, what's even worse, if something goes on over here to change the circuit, such as this current increases, let's say to two amps, now what's happened? Well, now this voltage must be higher than that voltage. Now it must be two volts higher. But there's my black lead of my voltmeter, so I put my red lead there, I'm still going to read zero volts. But yet, over here, I'm going to read minus two volts. That's going to change everything that's going on in the circuits. My voltages aren't going to add up right anymore. So as I measure voltages out here, the further away I get from this point, the lower those voltages are going to go. And as this current fluctuates, those voltages are going to go up and down throughout the circuit. So I'm, I'm going to get these erroneous readings. And so that's what we call a ground loop. I think we should call it a lifted ground or something like that. We call it a ground loop. A ground loop is where you have a ground point for your circuit that somehow is not connected to the proper ground. Once again, the difference is this is a proper ground because not only can I put my black lead there and make that zero volts, but if I have current flowing in here, there's very little impedance or very little resistance over here. So I get tiny, tiny changes in my voltage. Here I have a lot more resistance. So as my current changes, this voltage gets bigger and bigger. If we can see that, if we move our black lead to the proper ground, there it is there. Now I put my red lead here. What do we have? This is now zero volts. Let's get rid of that. This is now zero volts. Why? Because that's where I put my black lead. So I put my red lead here. We know now two amps, one ohm, that's going to be two volts higher. So, oh, my ground point is now two volts. Let's increase that to three amps. Now my voltage here is backed up even more. Now the ground for my circuit is now at three volts. We can't have that. Ground must stay at zero volts. So here's the fault. I need to find out what's going on here, loose connection or whatever, and eliminate that one ohm of resistance. Now we have no resistance, zero ohms, and I can have all the current I want. And to get that voltage back up, what do we need? You need current plus resistance. I have three amps of current, but no resistance. So with no resistance, I don't get any backup of voltage. And I put my red lead here and I see zero volts, zero volts, zero volts, zero volts all along there because what's the red lead telling me? The difference between this voltage and that voltage. There's no resistance, so there can be no backup of voltage. So everywhere here is the same voltage, which happens to be the same voltage as here. So my meter reads zero volts along there and I've fixed my circuit. So the answer to the question is, when I draw circuits without loops, current must flow in a loop. No loop, no current. So if I'm drawing something out, let's draw a transistor here and say, okay, this is a NPN transistor with an HFE of 10. And if you're if we're talking about DC circuits here now, I'm way ahead of you, but what this means is the current going in here is going to be 10 times the current flowing in there. And then those two currents combine to come out the other end here on the emitter. So let's say I have one milliamp going into the base. That means I'm going to have 10 milliamps going into the collector. And that means I'm going to have 
uh, 11 milliamps coming out the emitter. And if you haven't gotten into the solid state, this might be a little baffling to you, but that's just what a transistor does. And, but wait a second, where's the loop? Well, obviously I've got some batteries out here. I've got a battery over here somewhere and some circuitry going over there and some more circuitry over here. Don't know what it is, but there it is. I obviously have some kind of a voltage source over here. I could have another battery or I could be just connecting this over there and I have some more circuitry over here going to there. Could I have some more circuitry going this way? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But I have other circuitry out there causing these currents to flow. And the abstract thinking is, if I see current, there must be a loop. So if you don't see the loop, I just didn't draw it. You just have to infer that it's there, that something's there causing that. So that's the answer to the question. I hope it did answer. No disrespect meant in saying, hey, you need to learn abstract thinking. That's what we need to do. That's what separates us techies from the rest of the world is our ability to think in the abstract instead of the concrete. Countless scientific discoveries were made from that kind of logical thinking. And that's what makes the scientist who he is, is the ability to think in the abstract and to see what is not there. If something is there, and it cannot exist without something else. The something else must be there. And when it comes to science, then we go start looking for that something else. And who knows what discoveries we might make. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible and a big thank you to everyone for watching.